so the most important thing when you're adding and subtracting fractions is that you have a common denominator. So, for example, if I was asked to add one half plus one third, I would look at those and say, what is my common denominator? So what number did two and three both go into? And I know that two and three both go into six, so I've made my common denominator a six. And then I can say, well, looking at this fraction, that one, if I was a two, and I'm now making it a six, I've timesed it by three. So times the top number by three to get three. That fraction has been times by two. Three was times by two to make six. So one times two is two. And add them together. Three times add two is five on the top. And your six stays the same. So the answer to that one will be five sixths. So subtracting fractions works in just the same way, but in this question, if you look, we've got one and two thirds for the top value. And what we need to do for that is make it into a top heavy fraction. So one and two thirds is the same as five thirds. Take four bits. Five and three both go into 15. And then if you look what we've times by, that fraction has been times by five because three times five makes it 15. So the top number becomes 25. That fraction has been times by three. So the top number becomes 12. 25, take 12 is 13. And your bottom number stays as 15. So that answer is 13 fifteenths. So when we're multiplying and dividing fractions, we don't need a common denominator. So when we multiply and divide fractions, we start with some multiplying. If I have something like one half times one fifth, then all I do is I look at that, I say one times one on the top is one, two times five on the bottom is ten. So one half times one fifth is one tenth. So you must remember that when we're multiplying fractions, you can also do some simplifying on the diagonals. So if, for example, you were doing four over nine multiplied by three over two, we can do some simplifying on this because we know that looking at the diagonal, the four and two, they both divide by two. So I'd be left with a one on this side and a two on that side. And 3 and 9 both divide by 3. So 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 three times. If I do my multiplying, I now get 2 times 1 on the top is 2, over 3 times 1 on the bottom is 3. So the answer to that one would be 2 thirds. So again with fractions, if you have a mixed number, we need to make that top heavy before we do our multiplying. So, one and three quarters are the same as seven quarters. So our first step is to make that into seven over four. And I now look for things I can cancel. So seven and 21, they both divide by seven. Seven's in 21 once, and seven goes into seven once, and 21 three times. And two and four both divide by two, so the one and two. And if I now do my multiplying, hopefully you can see that one times one is one on the top, two times three is six on the bottom. The answer to that one is one sixth. So lastly, some dividing. When we divide by fractions, what we do is we turn the second fraction upside down. We flip it. So instead of one half, it's two over one. And if that's the case, the divide changes to a multiply. And again, when we're multiplying, we can look for things that cancel. So two and four both divide by two, which will give us an answer of three times one is three, two times two and hopefully you've spotted that's a top heavy number so if it's three over two we can say that's the same as one and one half.